Hi all, in this section of the tutorial we are going to perform some sequence quality control and denoise our data. First, we will run chime data to denoise single right here, and then we will run uh, chime metadata tabulate. So, before we get on with the fun of this tutorial, let's talk about where we came from, where what our last tutorial was. So in our last tutorial, we had imported the Chime2 data. Um, and at the very end of our last tutorial, we were looking at the dmuxseq.qzv file. Um, and we were kind of like talking about what it showed us. So the first step of denoising is actually figuring out where to truncate using that visualization. So let's make sure that everyone has that. So first I'm just going to ls in my working directory of the mouse tutorial. And you should see this QZ V visualization. Um, and if you don't, then maybe you should return to the importing and demuxing part of the tutorial and then come back to this video um, because that's a pretty important part of this tutorial. So before we jump in to actually doing some quality sequence control and denoising our data, why do we need to do this? So we need to denoise our data because there's noises in our noise in general in our sequences that come from sequencing and sample collection. And this could affect our analysis or like how we view the composition of whatever we're looking at. So we need to make sure that the sequences that we're looking at are representative of what, what we're trying to analyze. So in this section of the tutorial, we will look at where it's appropriate to truncate our data, how to denoise our data, and how to interpret a data to uh, uh, stats.qzv file. Um, and at the end of this tutorial, we should have good quality data that doesn't have too much noise that allows us to move forward with the Chime 2 pipeline. So first, we need to look at this visualization um, in order to uh, kind of see what the quality of our sequences and where we theoretically should truncate. So we need to go to the location where we can get the visualization. So we're going to go to workshop-server.chime2.org slash zippyowl, which is my username. So make sure to enter your username. So I go to my mouse tutorial directory and here you can see all of the files that we could see over here, just like slightly differently, just organized differently, visualized differently. So I'm going to go to my QZV file. We have one called the same thing, but that's a QZA file. So make sure you go to your QZV file and I'm copy that link address. Then I'm going to go to Chime2 view and boom, bada bing, bada boom. We're going to uh, provide a link from the web. And we're just going to paste that little guy in there. So um, looking at this, it, it tells a lot about our DMUX sequence summaries, but we want the interactive quality plot. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so we can see this um, plot a little bit closer up. Maybe that's a little too much. Okay. So. Here is our plot on our forward read reads. This is a single end read, so we don't have a reverse read. Um, and we can kind of see that our, our data is pretty good. There's no real hard and fast rule for how you should truncate your data. Um, it's mostly a judgment call, but it has to be a rough estimate of the good data. Um, sorry, what I'm trying to say is it has to be, you know, relatively good data so that Dota 2 doesn't get lost in all of the noise and the bad quality and stuff. So um, a good estimate is probably like a median above Q30. We can see by the, the box plots, I'll zoom in. You can see that the by the box plots here that there are, um, the fair amount of our data has a median above Q30. So that's really good. There's no major drop off around here, which typically happens with data. So that's really good. Um, since our data is overall so good, we don't really need to truncate at any like specific length. So we will include all of this sequence length in our analysis. So we will truncate at 150 
sequence bases. So let's go to this tutorial again. So here is our data to denoise single. So now that we've decided where to truncate, we're going to run this. Um, it takes a while to run, so as it is running, I'm going to discuss what we've inputted and what we'll output from it. Um, but at first, I'm just going to run it because it just it takes a minute to run. So we got it all in there. Press enter. Okay. So first, we inputted a dmuxseq.qza file. This is a zip file that contains each read. So when we denoise these reads, we'll still know which read belongs to what sample. Um, we didn't use the parameter trim left, but it is an option for uh, chime data to denoise. And what it does is it trims out the primer if the sequence still has the primer in it. But our data is EMP protocol, which means that it doesn't have the primer still in it, so we didn't have to trim left. Um, we will output a table which has sample ideas, sample IDs and sample features but has no interest in sequences. Um, so this table right here um, will have sample IDs and numbers of features, but it won't have any sequence information. Uh, this representative sequence file, believe it or not, has sequences. It's an output of the Amplicon seq variance, and all of the corrected sequences are given a number called a hash. So whenever the same sequences are found, it produces the same hash. Um, this is a way it's easier to refer to the same sequences because that hash is so much shorter than referring to them as like their entire name. Um, and then I'll, lastly, we will output denoising stats data to underscore stats .qza, which basically tells us how the denoising step went. As you, um, as you can see by our next step, we're going to do chime metadata tabulate on that data to underscore stats .qza. So that file is actually a metadata file um, so we'll use metadata tabulate to visualize it, and it can be used later on in the pipeline as a metadata file if you wanted to do that. So we just got all of the, the outputs that I talked about. Um, you can see that these are feature tables, um, and this is sample data. So the next step we're going to do is we are going to run metadata tabulate. So but jam. We are going to run this and then we'll get a visualization of that stats.qza file. So it didn't take very long and now we have that stats.qzv file. Awesome. So now let's head back to that um, visualization of the workshop server. So basically I'm going to refresh because this page doesn't auto refresh when you get new sequences. So until I refreshed we didn't have um, my new sequences that I had just um, created. So we are going to want this data to underscore stats.qzv. So I'm going to copy this address link. I'm going to go to chime to view. And I'm going to get a file from the web. So um, then I'm going to paste that in there and it's going to create a visual or like create the visualization for me. We're going to be able to view it. So let's discuss what this is saying. So these are all our sample ideas, our unique sample IDs. And then these are all the reads from those sample IDs. So it's telling us how many were inputted, how many were f kept after filtering, how many were kept after denoising, and how many were kept, um, were kept being considered non-chimeras. Chimeras are created during PCR when unrelated molecules become tangled and then they're amplified as a single unit. So for this first one, we inputted 4,460. Filtering based on quality, we kept 3,764. Um, when we denoised that data, we removed all of that noise from the sequencing and sampling steps. We remained with 28... 79. And then when we removed all the chimeras, we had 2209. So pretty good. Um, and then you can obviously like that's just for one sample. So there's a bunch of sample reads and you can organize them by like lowest. So the lowest amount was actually had a huge input. It had, it was the one that had our 16 
thousand um, input. It, we filtered out a lot of them, so we only kept nine thousand nine hundred and nineteen. Um, after we denoised them, we only got three hundred and forty-seven, and there wasn't any chimeras in there. They didn't filter out. I know it's kind of shocking to have that many reads filtered out, but the majority of our samples actually didn't lose very many reads, so we're not that concerned. It just means that that particular sample happened to be very noisy, and unfortunately it happened to have a high sequence depth. So there you have it folks, we now know how to read a stats file from Dada2. So just to recap what we've done in this tutorial, we learned how to denoise our data, we learned how to um, do some quality control on our data, and just in terms of when to use this, this can be used a lot of times, whether or not it's Dada2 or another denoising and quality control method, um, this is a pretty important part of most pipelines because you need to make sure that your data is of good quality and doesn't have noise from sequencing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, thank you guys for listening. In this section, we are going to be generating a feature table summary. Now that we've effectively run Dada2, we have our Dada2 results. So we have our Dada2 table.qza, our Dada2 repset.qza, and our Dada2 stats.qza. We have looked at our stats QZA, which allows us to see how our denoising went. And now we need to create a summary or a visualization for our Dada2 feature table. The feature table includes counts associated with each sequence and each feature that will allow us to gain more insight on our data. So let's head on over to our command line and make sure that we have everything we need. So I'm going to ls into my working directory. My working directory is my workshop directory and then inside that workshop directory is the, move, the mouse tutorial. So I'm going to ls and what I really need to make sure I have is this data2.qza file. If I don't have that, I can't run this command. So now I'm going to come over and I'm going to copy from this little clipboard guy our command for running feature table summarize. And we're just going to paste that right in there. We're going to be running a feature table summarize. Our input is going to be the data2table.qza. We're going to input our metadata and we're going to output a visualization. And so this should only take a couple of seconds, and once we have that, we will have our visualization. So now we have our visualization. I'm not really gonna look into this one, but we will look into it later on when we're doing our alpha or a faction video. Awesome. So thank you guys for listening, and I hope you learned a lot.